Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I want to address one of my most frequently asked questions. And that is, my flight controller won't connect to beta flight. What do I do? Well, today, I'm gonna explain ya. As per most of these beta flight videos, I have my handy Ishin wizard to help us out today. And I'm gonna try to duplicate a couple of scenarios, which is gonna prevent your quad from actually connecting to the computer. So with that, let's get into it. We'll jump over to the screen grab and we'll take a look at a couple things in Betaflight. The first step, which is probably your most important, is making sure that all of your software is installed correctly. I'm not gonna get into all the nitty gritty and the details on installing the software because I have other videos on that that are in this playlist. Uh, they're actually at the beginning, installing Betaflight Configurator and installing drivers and all that good stuff. So if you're looking for the full details, I recommend checking out those videos, following the instructions, and you should be successful with the actual software installation. However, once you have Betaflight installed, you're gonna see that right in the main window of the configurator, you're gonna have a couple of links right here in order to download your drivers. Uh, you literally just click on the link depending on the driver that you need. You should be installing the first two anyway by default, the CP210X drivers and also the STM USB VCP drivers. These are an absolute must. Uh, the ZDiag is a little advanced and it can be difficult and intimidating for someone that's new. Therefore, I recommend using the Impulse RC driver fixer in order to install your DFU drivers. Again, I have videos on this. Uh, I believe that is actually in the driver installation video. So if you're looking for this stuff, literally just open the Betaflight configurator, click on these links, and download and install the appropriate drivers for your computer system. Now here's a little bit of a catch. If you're on Windows 10, it's very possible that you don't need to install any of these drivers. Your flight controller might connect up just fine and you might be able to work with it and you may not need to do anything. But I do recommend going to the manufacturers of the microcontrollers, downloading those drivers and installing them just the same. It's not gonna hurt anything and that's gonna give you the best connection as possible. So that's number one on the list. Make sure all your software is installed correctly. And that gets us to our next part. We've already done that and it won't connect. What now? If it's not connecting, the first thing I recommend paying attention to is if it dings when you plug it into the computer. I'm hoping you'll get that audio in the screen grab. I don't know for sure, but just be aware, have your speakers on your computer and make sure the quad makes the computer ding just like any other USB device. You know, when you plug in a flash drive and you get that da ding and it connects and it works, same thing with this. That's the sound that you're listening for. So if you get that uh, and you installed your drivers correctly, there's really no reason why the quad shouldn't connect. At that point, you might have a problem with your flight controller, maybe something got fried during the installation, or you might have a problem with your computer, but reboot the computer and see if that helps. If it doesn't, then you probably have a major issue, and anything I'm gonna get in here really, I don't think it's gonna help you out. So that's right out of the gate. Listen to the ding when you plug in the quadcopter. So we know that cable worked just fine, and I know I can connect the quad to the computer because I've done it a million times with that. But, okay, here's another scenario. I've got a different cable here. I'm gonna plug it in. And the flight controller pops up. No ding. Why aren't I getting a ding here? And the answer to that is actually very simple. You need to use a different cable. Either the cable you have is bad. Most of these have such cheap wiring in them that, you know, some sharp bends or whatever, that could damage or break the cable. But here's another thing. A lot of these inexpensive USB cables are only made for charging a cell phone. If you go to a gas station and pick up one of those colorful, cheap cables, I bet you it's not made to pass data. It's only made to charge your cell phone. And if you try to use that cable to plug in your quad, if it can't pass data, it's not gonna ding and you're not gonna be able to connect to the computer. So this is literally the solution to about 90% of your problems out there is no ding, new cable. Very, very simple. Plug it in, you should be good to go. Um, 
And that's literally the answer to this is if you can't connect and you think you've done everything correctly, try a new cable first. But before we finish this video, I want to jump into device manager and I'm going to show you a couple things to look for just so you know that you're on the right track. Okay, so I have my device manager open and I'm going to show you what this looks like if you might have a problem. Right now, for the sake of example, this is a servo controller. I do not have the drivers installed the computer for this. And this is actually going to give us a little bit of a warning inside device manager. And I want to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to wait for the computer to recognize it. And you'll see it kind of knows what it is. It's saying other device. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But look, it, it says that it's a uh, servo controller. So the computer kind of knows what it is, but it doesn't have the software to work it. And if you see this, when you plug in your quad, anything like this. So, you know, follow the plug. I unplug, item goes away. I plug it back in, it's going to pop back in there. That's how I know this is what I'm dealing with. And if you plug in your quad and you see this popping in here this morning and the computer doesn't know what to do with it, well, you have the wrong drivers installed and you need to download and you need to install the right drivers. Once you do that, the quad should connect. And I'm actually, I'm going to show you what all that's going to look like if the drivers are installed correctly and everything is working. So I'm going to plug in my quad. The computer is going to recognize it and you'll see that I don't have any warnings in here. Well, how do I know that the computer is actually talking to it? Again, we're listening for that ding. That ding is key. But if I go in my COM ports, uh, we're going to see, where the heck is it? Right here under COM 11, see this? CP21X USB to UART bridge. That's our flight controller. And another easy way to figure out what my COM port actually is while connecting to Betaflight, if I unplug the quad while I have the ports section of device manager open, you're going to see that COM port is going to disappear. Look at no more COM port 11. I plug the quad back in and in a second, COM port 11 is going to pop back in there. That's how I know that this is the right port for this particular quad. Now, when I jump over to Betaflight, you're going to see that we have the same COM ports available that you saw in Device Manager. It's not COM port 1, COM port 6 is a 3D printer. I don't even know what COM port 3 is on this thing. So, well, it's COM port 11. We verified that by Device Manager. And if I click on 11 and I hit connect, the quad is going to connect right up, easy peasy, no big deal. There are a few tips to, well, A, making sure that you've done everything correctly when it comes to software and driver installation, uh, doing a little bit of troubleshooting when the flight controller isn't connecting to the computer. And again, the reality of it is there isn't too much to this. Install Betaflight Configurator. You can literally use the links within the configurator to get the correct drivers. Install all of that and the quad should connect. If it doesn't, get a different cable. If that cable doesn't work, same exact deal. Try a different cable. Otherwise, you could try doing it on a different computer, but really I would go for that cable first. I'm not even joking. I would say 98% of the time when somebody asks me this question, it's because they're using a charging cable, not a data cable. Okay, well, that's it for today. I hope all of you are successful with your Betaflight installations and getting your copters connected to your computers, but that's it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.